Hey everyone, welcome to episode 14 of The Photo Show. My name is Brian Matias. Today is June 8th, 2016. So we had a little bit of a break because I visited my family in New York City for about five days and you always have the best intentions. I meant to pack one of my little black magic uh, little studio things that would allow me to bring or to connect my camera, which I brought with me, uh, to my laptop, and I brought my mic, the wireless mic I'm using here, but I forgot the black magic, so I couldn't connect the camera to the laptop, which I didn't. I, I didn't really want to do the photo show using the webcam because it's it's just not as I, I didn't want to dv too much from the quality and i was really excited to do it from new york but so be it i ended up taking a little bit of a break which is great because uh, i was able to come up with a bunch of different uh stories for this episode and beyond so as always uh you know make sure you participate that's the cool thing about the live show and even after the show finishes the live broadcast participate by leaving your questions or your criticism or whatever you want in the comments section that's the cool thing about these archives is that uh, the episode lives on. So for today's show, let's see what we've got. Um, what's cool, just to show you again, um, we've got the uh, comments here. So during the five minute little uh, bumper timer, my friend Betsy asked me to wink because I kind of show the, uh, the video through the timer so you know that it's still live. So I gave a wink and uh, we'll be... Um, We'll be checking in on the comments throughout. So what I'd like to do is start with our first story today, and that has to do with um, Adobe. Didn't really see this one coming. Uh, Adobe uh, released CC 6.6 today, and I'm actually going to switch over and we're going to take a look at one of the really cool new features, um, which is a kind of an improved upright correction for photos that have uh, suffer from uh, barrel distortion, uh, this is especially the case when you use a wide angle lens, an ultra wide angle lens, and you're shooting architecture and you're kind of like maybe panning up a bit or, or panning down and you end up getting your, your kind of ver primary vertical kind of keystone lines end up, instead of being straight up and down, they start to kind of tilt and converge. And that's just a product of using a wide angle lens. Uh, if you have a tilt shift lens though, for architecture photographers, you know, commercial photographers, real estate photographers, the shifting component of a tilt shift lens is critical because that allows you to get what's called rectilinear lines. So the lines are actually straight and straight through as well, uh, through as you go into the depth of the photo. So let's go ahead. I'm going to jump over here uh, really quickly to Lightroom and all right, let me just make sure that this is coming through. It is awesome. Um, so here I've got Lightroom. This, uh, this already has been updated. And this is a photo I took uh, over the weekend uh, uh, on the High Line, which is on the west side of Manhattan, kind of near Chelsea Market. Uh, and it's one of my favorite places. And the reason why I took this particular photo was because um, the there was a kind of a fog that or these clouds, these low-hanging clouds that rolled in through the top tower of the Empire State Building, which you see right here. Now, the only thing I did to this photo, I'm going to show you, I'll go to the develop module. Um, and let me just hide this here so you can see more of the screen. Um, the only thing I did was I, 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 I did some tonal corrections um, and the computer is just chugging, which is really sad. Um, all I wanted to do was show you the original. There's the original. Okay. So you could see I exposed for uh, the highlights, which darkened the image, uh, and then just a little bit of correction, and I was able to uh, bring that out pretty easily. So here, kind of a nice, evenly exposed photo. Now, what you can see here is if you look at the lines of this photo, and just I should, I should note that this photo was taken with um, a Sony A7R Mark II, and the new Zeiss Bodice 18 millimeter. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 hold on. What was this taken with? Wait, let me see. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. Oh, sorry, my bad. This was taken with the Zeiss Bodice 85 millimeter. The 18 millimeter, there's no way I would have gotten this close, uh, even with the crazy crop. Well, maybe with the 
40 some odd megapixels I could have cropped in. But no, this is an 85, mega, uh, 85 millimeter Zeiss Bodice F1.8. So you can see the diagonal lines here um, just because of my vantage point compared to the buildings. I was actually kind of holding the camera and pivoting upward to fill this in frame. So with the new version of Lightroom, if you scroll down in the develop module, there's actually a brand new panel called transform. And uh, one thing I should also note is speaking of the Zeiss bodice 18 millimeter f 2.8, uh, the uh, one of the new kind of lens correction profiles that was added in this update was for that lens. So yesterday, if I tried to do lens correction for that bodice 18 millimeter, it wouldn't work or there would be no profile today. I can now get corrections for uh, vignetting and distortion, like pin cushioning. So let's talk about upright. So you can see here under transform, there's upright. And you have the same kind of basic um, profiles that you used to have. But the one that we're going to go for, this new one is called guided. Now you can do guided one of two ways. You can either click on guided, which is this button right here, or you can click on this little, it looks like a crop icon, but it's just a bunch of lines. So I'm going to click on that. And what you're going to do is draw at least two guided lines against whatever you think the main vertical lines should be. In this case, I'm going to draw a line and basically I'm dragging out and you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to kind of align it with that first uh, vertical line of the building. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here with this building. Uh, just kind of get to the corner. And you see the little zoom reticle. I really appreciate that because it lets you align very nicely. And even as you're dragging, you can kind of see. So I'm gonna bring it down to about over here and let go. Once you do that, once it has two points, at least two points, I should say, um, it's enough for Lightroom to correct for that distortion. And now we have some really nice true vertical lines. Like the Empire State Building looks nice and straight. These buildings look nice and straight. And for, uh, again, for photographers who are doing uh, this type of work, it's just nice to know that you can have that much more granular control because in the previous version, again, yesterday, there was no guided. You can hit vertical and if Lightroom just simply couldn't detect it or couldn't de detect the vertical lines, it would error out. You get an error message or a message saying it can't do it. Now you can actually help guide Lightroom. I think this is really great. I love seeing um, Adobe kind of just iterate on this stuff. I'm going to switch really quickly here. Oh man, I didn't realize that I had the lower thirds the entire time. Let me see the comments. If anyone caught that. Uh, no, no one caught it. That's okay though. Sorry for that though. I didn't realize the lower thirds was on. I can't, that's one of the things I have to remember. But um, so again, 10 bucks, 10 bucks. Um, is the price of, I don't know, two cups of, two lattes at Starbucks, which is, for some reason, why do we always love to kind of compare um, like the cost or value of something like a $5 app in the app store? We're like, well, that's a, that's a latte at Starbucks. So I don't know who wins in that, if it's Starbucks or if it's, you know, the person making the argument, but it's true, 10 bucks is what it costs per month, 10 bucks per month, to get the photography pack uh, for Adobe Lightroom or for Adobe Creative Cloud. So that gives you not just Adobe Lightroom, but Adobe Photoshop. In my opinion, that is the most amazing deal in terms of software. And here's why I'm a big fan and I'm not endorsed by Adobe whatsoever. I'm actually, I've been quite critical of Adobe and I still am because Lightroom is slow as, I, well, I can't say it, to maintain my, my PG rating, but it is slow as hell. Um, on my, this is not maxed out, current gen iMac, i7, 64 gigs of RAM, discrete graphics card. You can't get a more powerful iMac. Connected to a G technology, uh, Ray, uh, G Speed Studio via Thunderbolt 2. One of the fastest bus speeds you can get. It's slow as anything. It's just the most miserable experience. Even just testing it out here and going from before and after was pretty miserable. But, I know I have to say but. In before Creative Cloud days, before subscription model, 
that feature that we just got would have, you'd have to wait a year or 18 months, whatever the product refresh cycle was to go from Lightroom 6 to Lightroom 7 to see something like that. And the same thing goes with uh, Photoshop, where just a few weeks ago, Adobe teased a new content aware cropping feature that will come when it's ready. So in that respect, I'm a big fan of subscription models because um, it allows you to, um, it allows the, the company, the software development company, in this case, Adobe, to release features once they're pretty much baked. So I'm a big fan of that because normally you'd see a maintenance release like this and it would only have uh, maybe the, the lens correction profiles for newer lenses as well as uh, raw profiles for newer cameras, which this feature does have. But um, having a major feature like that added a whole new panel, that transform panel, with the, uh, the uh, guided vertical correction as well as horizontal. It'll also help you correct horizons. Uh, so for those of you who aren't using a, um, some sort of a, a ball head that corrects for that, like I have a kind of a, a tilting or panning ball head that allows me to correct for an even horizon, make sure that it's level. If you don't have that and you get in, in a lot of cases, I've had a situation where I tried to do the auto correct for the horizon in Lightroom and it just said it cannot find uh, the appropriate line. So now I can actually guide it. That's awesome. So Adobe, kudos for you. Um, I do hope though that we see some performance updates because it's, it's pretty miserable on my computer and uh, browsing from photo to photo on a computer this powerful uh, doesn't add up. So leave a, leave a comment. I wanna know if you guys are seeing the same kind of performance issues that I am because I'm, I'm really interested. All right, so the next uh, story here that I'd like to talk about is I'd like to highlight or feature a user, a member of my Facebook group called Evolve Your Eye. And you can get to it by going to evolveyoureye.com, which will bring you to the Facebook group. His name is Bill Scott, and he posted a series of photos weeks ago. Um, and well, he posted just these photos, and I was like, these are awesome night shots. And he responded saying, no, these, these aren't night, well, they're not night shots, they're actually photos that he takes in broad daylight. And the way he stylizes it uh, is it, it looks like it was taken at night and light painted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna show you some of these uh, photos here. And this time I will get rid of the, um, the camera and all that stuff. Okay, cool, now we're clean. Um, so here's, I asked him to send me some before and after photos um, just to illustrate this for you guys. So here's a photo. This is the photo that he took straight out of camera. And then this is just so awesome. Like I, I, I've been doing this for a long time and I've seen a lot of people share a lot of photos, but I don't, I can't recall seeing this kind of effect. So again, straight out of camera. And like, this looks so damn cool. It's just, and it's such a, um, in terms of um, the execution, it's straightforward. But the, the concept is what I'm just so impressed with. And I, I, you know, Bill is so humble. We've been emailing back and forth. Um, and you know, he's new to photography, um, but I just had to feature him because I don't know, I'm a big fan of this. Um, big, big fan. I'm a big fan of people like, think about it. Like, all right, let's, let's use, this is the final example. I don't know how many times I've been in this situation and I'm sure you guys have been too, you're out and you're hoping for cloudy skies, you know, nice kind of uh, weather conditions, but it's just blue skies and it's hot and it's, oh, and it's also like one or 2 p.m. so the sun's directly above you and casting super, super harsh shadows. And you're like, oh man, I'm not gonna, um, I've got nothing to shoot here. And then you shoot it and you go home and you create something like this. So for me, I, I don't know, I am such, I am so impressed with, uh, with Bill here and I just kind of wanted to take just a few minutes to, 
I don't know, just highlight him. And so you can see here, we, he calls the series Night Effect. At least I think he does, because that's what was in quotations in one of the emails he sent. And um, if you want to just check out more of his work, because he's got more. Um, he has all of his stuff on Flickr, so I've got it listed on the lower third here. It's flickr.com forward slash photos forward slash BD Scott. And I'm just so, I, I love it. And that's one of my favorite things so far that came out of uh, my, the Evolve Your Eye Facebook group was just seeing that and being able to just give one of the users uh, some spotlight because that is awesome. Uh, just thinking about a, a unique way. I, listen, I, like I said, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Until I saw that, I can honestly tell you, at least from my perspective, I never, ever once, it never dawned on me to um, take a photo that I took midday and then stylize it as if it was taken at night. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, I'm, I'm, I just want to give a huge shout out and kudos to, uh, to Bill. All right. Last story for episode 14 is, um, again, EvolveYourEye.com. One of the posts, one of the members brought up uh, a post about podcasts that he listens to, that he, you know, enjoys, and then asked what other people listen to. So, uh, I listed mine, and admittedly, I listen to very few photography podcasts. Um, mostly, I, I listen mostly to um, business and entrepreneurial podcasts, and then, of course, serial and, like, startup, but... Um, one of my favorite podcasts for entrepreneurs is called Smart Passive Income with Pat Flynn. Great podcast if you're, you know, running your own business and you just kind of want to grow. But uh, one of the members or one of the viewers of the photo show, um, it, you can go back to some of the episodes. You'll see in the comments, his name is Mike Sharkey James. Sharkey. Um, would comment and you know, he would give suggestions and he dropped, you know, the fact that he hosts the Petapixel podcast. Now, um, it's been no secret that I've, I've been kind of critical of Petapixel in the past. Um, not the biggest fan of some of the articles that, they, that they've allowed to publish. And, um, you know, in all fairness, those articles were not necessarily written by Petapixel or Petapixel authors. Some of them were just kind of like written by a third party and aggregated through Petapixel. But there are some that are just pure clickbait and don't offer any redeeming value. And that's kind of the, the, the benchmark that I have for websites that I frequent is these blog sites, I'm talking about Petapixel, F-Stoppers, um, Photofocus, um, DIY photography, digital photography school, they want to consider themselves or they fashion themselves as kind of press websites like journals for photographers, for creatives. And, you know, they get press credentials at trade shows. They get special access. Uh, they basically trade on the fact that they are press in a way. Well, if you want to be that, you should be held to those standards as well. Um, you don't want to, for me, I don't want to, I'm not interested in reading the Inquirer or in some cases, New York Post. I'm more into like uh, the New York Times um, or, you know, web, uh, journals or periodicals that actually, um, they don't give you too, a slanted view. They just simply convey something. All right, my rant is over. You know, Petapixel, I, you can't take, I cannot, despite some of the issues, they produce a gargantuan amount of content. A lot of content that I would never see if I wasn't a subscriber, which I am, I subscribe to them. With that said, going back to podcasts, I, um, the, just the other day, um, I gave uh, the Petapixel podcast a try. I started with episode 75. And it should, you know, I should note that I actually started uh, chatting with Sharky offline via Facebook Messenger and also we've had phone calls now. Um, and it's been so great getting to know him. Uh, mostly because, like me, he's a huge Howard Stern fan. So if you no longer ever want to listen to me again because I'm a huge Howard Stern fan, so be it. But I love Howard Stern. I grew up on him. Baba Booey. Um, 
And I gotta say, episode starting with episode 75 and then listening all the way through 78, which is the current live episode, it's one of the best photography podcasts I've ever heard. And I say that with such gusto to the point where that, if I were to start a podcast, that was the first thing I thought about when I listened to episode 75 was, if I were to do a podcast, I would do the podcast exactly like that. It's news related with an opinion, but unlike so many of the kind of sensationalized, clickbaity opinions that you see uh, on online, you can, when you listen to Sharky, you can hear that these are well-formed opinions and they could be in contrast to what you think, but you can tell that they're thought out. And I appreciate that. So um, in 70, episode 76, I believe it is, um, or even 77, obviously they cover the Steve McCurry, uh, what do they call it? Scandal? Scandal. Uh, it's a scandal. Um, but, you know, with Sharky, who has a background in photojournalism, it was great to hear his opinion, um, which is really great. Anyway, so if you go to petapixel.com forward slash podcast, uh, I would recommend subscribing to it. I subscribe to it through the um, podcast app uh, on my on iOS, so you'll get it through iTunes. It's just a great podcast that I want to recommend that. Um, and I only recommend things that I, I actually listen to or I read or I buy or pay for. So it's really cool stuff. Um, so let's see. None of the comments have come through here, so I'm going to refresh the Chrome window because something tells me either... Facebook is sucking or something is sucking, but I only see two comments. Oh, there are a few more comments. Okay, let's um, let's bring this up here. Oh, Sharky, go away. There we go. Oh my God, do you see how slow this is? All right, cool, here we go. So what do we have here? Colby, you're a bald. That is my criticism. Coming from someone who has been balder for longer than me, but that's okay, dude. Actually, Colby was the one that kind of convinced me to shave my head. And it was great. It's the best thing I ever did. Um, mo mostly because I'm more beautiful, but also because, like, it's, I don't have to worry about my hair getting all messed up or anything if I wear a cap or whatever. All right. Um, when am I going to... So Paolo is asking, when am I going to come up with some workshops around Boston? Uh, I don't know. I don't have any intention to. I, I lived in Boston for, like, eight years. But um, I don't know. I don't know what kind of workshop I would do, though. Let me think about that. Um, Alan's saying that performance for Lightroom is fine for me with a two-year-old iMac. See, this is the thing. I think... So right now, um, in Lightroom, I have... Um, I have one catalog. So I only have one catalog, and it has... Um, 200,689 items, videos and images. I don't know if, um, if that's causing an issue, which I don't think it should, but it's so slow. Now, granted, I should be fair. This is almost not fair. I should say this. I am currently streaming and recording a broadcast, um, which is taxing, but um, according to iStat menu, I am using five and a half gigabytes of RAM with 58 gigabytes free. I am using hundred between 85 and 100 percent of my processor. Still, I don't know that that should hit. Okay, even when I stop the broadcast, I quit Wirecast. It's still really poor performance. Dave Dad D is, uh, his conjecture is that Adobe invested in a molasses company and that's a feature that they're bringing in. Oh, Dave. Um, oh, Josh Carlyle, let's see what he says. Petapixel is like the buzzfeed of photography, clickbait intermi intermixed with popular. Ooh, Wirecast crashed. That, that um, sucked, but that's okay. Um, I should be going live again, hopefully. Let's see. Let's see what happened. So Wirecast crashed, but fortunately, it, so when you start a stream on Facebook, 
uh, you're assigned a, um, a URL, and that URL is good for 24 hours. So even if the Wirecast crashes, as long as I start the stream back in that same URL, yeah, it's back up. So sorry about that. And it was awesome. I don't know if you caught that frame <laughs> where the stream crashed. It was not my finest face. But that's how it always happens, right? Whenever you freeze frame a video, it's like the most awkward face that you could be making. But in any case, um, let me actually bring up the comments again. Oh, no, I didn't save that. Anyway. Um, just looking at the comments. Here. Okay, so um, Josh is saying that my video interrupted as soon as I was going to respond. So I'll just recap that really quickly to what Josh said. Um, I agree with what you said. But I've also had some conversations with Sharky, and we, we you know we talked about um, more in depth about Petapixel, and I have more context. And I guess context is, if I if I'm being critical of, you know what Petapixel puts out without context, I should have context. So I have a better idea um, for what they do and the amount of content they put out. It's pretty it's a pretty Herculean effort for two people that are doing it, plus Sharky who's doing the podcast. With that said, I don't know. I'm not making excuses. I think that there should be certain standards like, you know what, this isn't necessarily contributing to the greater good of the industry, photo and video and technology. Do we need to put this out here? You know, but then again, clicks equal money and, you know, we all have to answer to that God. Kind of, kind of have to. Um, so, Sandro, I, um, I recently switched to capture one nine. Huh. All right, that would be interesting. I would like to know, um, I, I've strongly considered that as well, but there are certain features that, um, with Lightroom that I still kind of need, especially with Lightroom Mobile. Mobile's just kind of getting, is really important to me, especially because I use that in one of the early episodes of the photo show. I walk you through my workflow of getting my photo from Lightroom. Someone's calling me, let me ignore that. Um, from Lightroom, over to my phone through Lightroom Mobile and then onto Instagram. So until Instagram open, makes it easy to share just through the web, I, that's kind of my workflow. Um, we all like the bacon. What bacon? I don't know what bacon you're talking about. No, so, so Josh is saying, I see how you handle the tough questions. No, 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 no. I'm not kowtowing or anything. I have absolutely no stake in Petapixel whatsoever. But I, under, I can appreciate how much work is, has to be done for two people. Um, and maybe it slips through, and that's where people like me will get critical and call them out. And maybe that helps refine a process. Who knows? But I still subscribe to them. I'm definitely a fan of the podcast. And actually, I uh, should have mentioned that I'm going to have Sharky as a guest. He's probably going to be the first guest of the photo show um, probably next week. So how the Petapixel podcast came to be is actually quite a cool story. And then I also want to kind of give you insight into what it's like to run a professional podcast. Um, well, I want him to give you insight. So, so with that, um, let's, uh, let's call a spade a spade and... Uh, get things going so there we go the photo show i love it you love it everyone loves it if you want to constantly get notified of when we go live uh, when you're viewing the video in the facebook app there's a little button that says live notifications or like right wait i can't bet there at the end over there um click it and when you do um you will see it turn blue and then you'll get notified of when we go live uh, so that's kind of how it goes uh, with that I'd love to invite you to follow me on social media uh, basically every major channel um, it is Facebook Instagram snapchat Twitter YouTube pretty much any time a new social media platform comes out I go and do a land grab on Brian Matias fortunately Matias is like you probably have never met anyone with the last name of Matias, that works in my favor. However, I have, I have lost to some people where their first name is Matthias and their last name starts with an H. But for the most part, I've been pretty lucky. I also got Matias as a domain name and I've trademarked Matias. 
like registered. So or actually it's in the process. With that, <laughs> I want to thank you all for joining me and I will see you for episode number 15 of the photo show. Have a great day, guys.